In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Immaculate Mother of our Savior, most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, it really adds a lot and accentuates uh, the responsorial psalm when it's sung. So that was a very nice surprise on the solemnity, and uh, it gives me an idea for how to begin this homily, which uh, I'm going to try to keep brief. There's very much that can be said about the sacred heart of Jesus and the devotion to that sacred heart, which our Lord has asked for. But here we heard, you will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And this uh, phrase is taken from the prophet Isaiah. And it tells us there in a very brief form why the devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Our culture today, as everyone knows, and as we unfortunately um, are forced to repeat frequently, has become not a civilization of love or a culture of life, but unfortunately it has become a culture of death. And this is because there is not devotion to the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ, where devotion to our Lord, who is the king of love, where this lacks, then his own words uh, regarding the end of times begin to manifest. Iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. It's hard to think of a, an image that inspires more confidence in the Christian uh, than the image of the sacred heart of our Jesus, that heart of flesh, of human nature, uh, able to love and able to suffer, pierced by thorns, thorns that represent the ingratitude of men, which cause our Lord such sorrow. Uh, he expressed this, his sorrow and suffering in his human nature, in his sacred heart, to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque when he appeared to her in 1675. St. Margaret Mary was a visitation nun and she received a visit, more than one, from our Lord. He expressed to her on one occasion, Behold this heart, which has so loved men, and which has spared itself nothing, even to exhausting and consuming itself, to prove to them its love. In return, I receive from the greater part of men nothing but ingratitude. That is why I ask that the first Friday after the octave of Corpus Christi be set aside as a special feast to honor my heart. And so uh, from this apparition and from this request, the feast that we celebrate today has had its liturgical um, initiation. And our Lord wants us to have salvation and wants us to live in joy. And so he wants this devotion to his sacred heart. He asked for it even expressly uh, to be manifested socially. The theological foundation of this devotion is the royal kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ over all men, which means over society. And he asked 
this of the king of France, actually, through St. Margaret Mary, he gave a series of, uh, he made a series of requests to the king of France. Of course, our Lord, knowing everything and how everything is going to go and how men are going to uh, abuse liberty, he was hoping that the king of France would accept uh, his request, he asked the king to consecrate his family to the Sacred Heart and to offer him public homage. He asked the king also to request to the Holy See the authorization for the Mass of the Sacred Heart and that this be received the privilege of being uh, diffused, spread throughout the whole church. He also asked for the construction of a basilica dedicated to his Sacred Heart and he asked the king to place France under the protection of the Sacred Heart and even include the image of the Sacred Heart on the official standard of the kingdom. And he asked the king to promote throughout all of Europe the rights of Christ the king and sovereign of sovereigns. These requests went unheeded and at the end of the uh, 18th century, then there was the French Revolution, and God was kicked down of France. Uh, they established the first atheistic government in the history of mankind. Uh, the king, very late, uh, remembered the requests and uh, had hoped to be able to um, make good on these requests, but our Lord later revealed through Sister Lucia Fatima, that at that point it was already too late. It had, the time had passed. Uh, but our, as I say, our Lord offers us devotion to his sacred heart as a means of bringing this society sunk in a culture of death back to a kingdom of life and love, uh, specifically through the public recognition of his kingship and the honoring of his law of love. Uh, the time at which he made this apparition and gave this, uh, these requests to the king was a time when uh, human authority had already been corrupted to the point where it was based solely on human will and absolute power rather than on the conception of of uh, authority as a service. And so our Lord offers himself as the example of all authority uh, that exists to serve others and dedicates and sacrifices itself for the good of all. And so, brothers and sisters, that's why uh, the church has given us this responsorial psalm in connection with this solemnity you will draw water joyfully from the spring, springs of salvation. Uh, if we go to Jesus, if we honor his requests, then we will have within ourselves those springs of living water with which we can uh, renew. Uh, the Lord, through us, will renew the face of the earth. Uh, he has specifically given a list of 12 promises, and I'll just cite one of those which uh, applies in a specific way to this, uh, these hopes that we have attached to the devotion. He said, one of the promises is that I will establish and maintain peace in all their families, in the families who will honor his sacred heart with a true uh, devotion. And one of those ways, uh, and I will close with this, is the enthronement of the sacred heart in families and, uh, and in homes, even of single people, uh, where an image of our Lord's sacred heart will be placed and an express uh, consecration will be made to his sacred heart, recognizing his kingship over all the members of the family over that home. And through the practice of uh, enthronement, if this is done with uh, zeal and dedication, home by home, family by family, the 
reign of Christ will be reestablished or established, uh, and there will be peace on earth. And so the sought after peace will come only when the heart of Jesus, the sacred heart of Jesus, is duly honored. And we in this chapel uh, during the holy hour this evening will also make the act of consecration, renew the act of consecration to the sacred heart that was made by uh, Pope Pius XII, and the church renews every year. Let us pray that the Immaculate Heart of Mary, our sure refuge and way to God, uh, will intervene for us and help us to be truly devoted to the sacred heart of Jesus. Praise be Jesus and Mary.